of the state of Maharaj Ambarish were accustomed to chanting and hearing about the glorious activities of the personality of Godhead. Thus, they never asp aspire to be elevated to the heavenly planets, which are extremely dear even to the demigods. By the pure devotee who has been trained in the practice of chanting and hearing the holy name of the Lord and his fame, qualities, form, paraphernalia, and so on, is never interested in elevation to the heavenly planets, even though such places are extremely dear even to the demigods. Narayana Palasarve Nakutashana Vidyati, Salga Pavarga Nara Kesh, Fatito Gyarta Darshina. Quote, from Srimad Bhagavatam 6, 17, 28, devotees solely engaged in the devotional service 
as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Narayan, never fear any condition of life. The heavenly planets, liberation, and the hellish planets are all the same to a devotee. A devotee is always situated in the trend, is a spiritual world. Therefore, he does not desire anything. He is known as akam, Akama, or desireless, because he has nothing to desire except to render transcendental <coughs> loving service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Because Maharaj Rambarish was the most exalted devotee of the Lord, he trained his subjects in such a way that the citizens in his state were not interested in anything material, including even the happiness of the heavenly planets. The two verses again is a sacrifice arranged by Maharaj Rambarish. The members of the assembly and the priests, especially Hotaut Gata Brahma and Advaru, were gorgeously dressed, and they all looked exactly like demigods. They eagerly saw to the proper performance of the Jagya. So the first verse is Om Magyan Timilanda Sya Gilangara Shalakeya Chakshuri Nita Nina Tasma Sri Gurave Nama Sri Chaitanya Manadista Stapina Nantale Svayam Rupa Kadamiyan Daladistra Panantika Hare Krishna. So the first verse is describing that <coughs> under the direction of a pure devotee, Maharajan Barish, the priests and the members of the assembly performed the sacrifice and especially, he said here, they were gorgeously dressed and they all looked exactly like demigods. Uh, gorgeously dressed, uh, su sa we have this word in uh, one of the, our songs, eh? Yashomati uh, uh, um, uh, At one time, the song is Subhas. Krishna is always gorgeously dressed. Of course, gorgeously may mean like in, uh, <coughs> in uh, Vaikuntha, Lord Narayan is gorgeously dressed. Can cannot imagine how gorgeous he must uh, appear to the worship of his devotees and in uh, Goloka Vrindavan Krishna is gorgeously dressed uh, uh, with uh, forest flower garlands with uh, peacock feathers with minerals uh, co colors and uh, all kinds of very natural um, uh, garments and uh, decorations which are for his devotees, his intimate devotees, which are even more gorgeous than the gold, diamond, and sapphire of Vegunta. So anyway, everybody was gorgeously dressed, and they all looked exactly like demigods. You remember which, which uh, Sanskrit name is given here for that? In the verse? For what? For they look exactly like demigods. Huh? No, speculation. <laughs> uh, 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 well, no, uh, okay. Yes, Tulia Rupa, of course. The, exactly the same form. Of who? Of Animisha. Animisha. With the eyes? Yes. Like uh, not I, like that. Eyes not blinking. No, no, no blinking of eyes. <coughs> um, yes, it is Animisha. I was a devotee having a restaurant in Paris before. Animisha. He disappeared. Right? I just disappeared. In the restaurant also. <laughs> Too bad. Yes, Animisha means uh, <coughs> Krishna. He has eyes which not. I don't. Uh, almost sure <laughs> that it is the name of Lord Vishnu, Narayan. Because, you know, probably Krishna sometimes he may. <laughs> a little <laughs> blinking to, the <laughs> to his uh, lovers. But uh, I know that uh, I, I'm almost sure that it is the name of Lord, uh, the Paramatma, Lord Vishnu, omnipresent, <coughs> is uh, Animisha, unblinking eyes. And it is said here like, uh, that uh, they look almost like demigods who have no blinking eyes. So again, this is a very uh, 
specific, very special opulence of the demigods. It says here, <coughs> they don't have eyes which blink, you know, like that. We are forced to eye blinking. We, we cannot control that. But, you know, they are not forced for that, at least. But again, that is demigods. But uh, um, uh, it, it, we have learned that in, uh, in Goloka Vrindavan, uh, the gopis, they have blinking eyes, and they don't like that at all. <laughs> they don't like that at all, and they are criticizing Lord Brahma, the creator, because you are not very good, you know, creator. You know, this is uh, very bad uh, for uh, the time of blinking of an eye. We cannot, uh, as a darshan of our Krishna. That's one verse of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Okay, so uh, gorgeously dressed and uh, <coughs> unblinking eyes like the, those of the demigods. <coughs> well, <coughs> <coughs> next verse. Oh, the citizens of the state of Maharaj Ambarish were accustomed to chanting and hearing about the glorious activities of the personality of Godhead. Thus, they never aspire to be elevated to the heavenly planets, which are extremely dear even to the demigods. <coughs> so on one side, you know, first verse, you know, they are like the vigors, gorgeously dressed, and blinking eyes. Next verse, they never aspire to be the vigors, or to become the vigors, to like the vigors. You know. But in between, in between, oh, those citizens of the state of this pure devotee, Maharaj Maharaj, were accustomed to chanting and hearing about the glorious activities of the personality of Godhead, thus, thus they never spied. So because they were accustomed re oops, regularly to, uh, with re regularly means bona fide and serious. You know. Sincere is important, but sincere can be just, uh, okay, for a little, you know, one day or one month or one year. But, uh, and it is necessary to be sincere, which means my goal is to please Krishna, to serve him with love. And go back on back to Godhead, this is. But serious means regularly, not serious. <coughs> so regularly, they were accustomed to chanting and hearing Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam about the glorious activities. Uttama Shloka Cheshtitam as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, thus they never aspired to that. So what is, uh, uh, what is the point of uh, regularly hearing and chanting uh, to never aspire for <coughs> uh, sense gratification, uh, gorgeous life, or comfortable life, or uh, peaceful life, security life, uh, beautiful things around, you know, Danam, Janam, Sundalim, Kavitam. Um, yeah. So, uh, by hearing and chanting about the glorious or very attractive uh, activities of God or Krishna, uh, then uh, uh, this appears, this so called uh, glorious uh, sense gratification, even of those of the demigods appear like a castle in the sky. Huh? That's a, yeah. or pushpa something. Huh? Yes, flower in the sky, or, you know, which doesn't exist. You, know, you may sense him and you see, oh, I'm feeling so good. I, I see flowers in the sky. And the and new Mayapo castle is just flying everywhere. everywhere. This is nice. <coughs> Roman, you know, poetic image, but it is not real. <coughs> so, <coughs> um, yes. So, for a devotee, this is just, you know, maybe nice, poetic, sentimental thing, but it is not real. They prefer their regular hearing and chanting about the Supreme Personality of Godhead, God, or Krishna. That, that is real. This is uh, uh, factual. Mm. Yes. So what's wrong? What's wrong? Where is, uh, there must be something wrong in uh, 
aspiring to demigod's life or uh, happy materialistic life. There is something wrong. Uh, since uh, those who have Tadda Darshi, uh, they, they see that as not interesting and they are very much attracted to something real, Krishna. So wh what's wrong with this uh, desire for sense gratification, <coughs> material happiness, go, you know, comfort, opulence? Uh, the, point, the wrong point is that <coughs> it doesn't belong to us. It is not meant for us to enjoy. It belongs to God and is meant for enjoyment, his enjoyment or to follow at least his plan because Krishna doesn't <coughs> enjoy matter. But still, <coughs> material energy is his energy and it is uh, following his will, his uh, lila, you know, to save the conditioned soul from this wrong conception of life, bodily conception of life. Mm -hmm. So that's the wrong part uh, that the devotees don't have. Uh, I am the master. I am the master. And therefore, I, I, I want and I can enjoy these things or these uh, you know, people or whatever. And everything, all that, the, all that I survey belongs to me and is meant for me. I am the center. <clears throat> and this is uh, wrong and uh, because it is wrong, like anything material, it deteriorates. And the so-called nice desire of sense gratification <coughs> that, uh, you know, let's all live uh, masters in peace together, democracy, uh, it be, you know, it, it goes toward uh, everybody, all the brothers in the world are building uh, destructive weapons. <laughs> Each in his own house. Mm. This is a result of this so-called uh, uh, humanitarian, democratic, uh, uh, peaceful, peaceful world, say, you know, maintained by laws and by uh, uh, you know, extremely powerful, dangerous weapons, only meant for peace. This is, you know, <laughs> great, uh, great mistake, great illusion, great hypocrisy. <coughs> so the problem is. Uh, that thinking that I am master and Maharaj Ambarish, he teaches, he teached his citizens to be servants, to hear about God, the real master, and to chant about him. To hear is already to surrender. You surrender your time and you're here. You know, we all had, we could have done many things now, but we came here and we can stay home and or do the same thing, but you know, we came here, so we surrender to Srimad Bhagavatam, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. You know, Vyasadev, Shukadev, Barash Parikshit, Prabhupada's purport, and trying to follow that. So we surrender to hearing, and chanting is, could be more like uh, uh, surrender in love, because when you chant, you know, well, active is, uh, hearing has to be active also, but it's a little less active. Chanting, you know, like, you know, those who are sitting here, you know, they sit, you know, peacefully, you know, against the wall like that, you know. Uh, I am sitting, chanting, you know, I, I'm not like that, but it's, you know, I have to, I have to give the class, you know. I have to <coughs> and sometimes some sleep, or, you know, it's good <coughs> hearing has to be very active, you know. Oh, this is, you know, Krishna's transcendental message, you know, and it's, something is, Something must be for me, and it's practical. But okay, but chanting is you know usually more active, and means glorifying <coughs> Krishna. There must be some real desire to to please him, you know, to appreciate him. So it's, we could say it's you know, loving Krishna. Yes, hearing, chanting, remembering. You no, know, hearing and chanting. Like we perform it regularly, morning. You know, chanting uh, holy name, hearing the holy name, chanting Bhagavatam, and you know, um, glorifying the deities for their uh, merciful, uh, opulent beauty. Uh, but all day, oh, uh, 
that's not regular. We do all kinds of activities, and then we have to learn how to remember. No, that's, uh, but if you do the hearing and chanting regularly in the morning, then gradually it comes by Krishna's mercy, cleaning our heart. Oh, something is coming back in the mind during the day from time to time, more and more regular. And then we, you know, Yat Karoshi Adashnasi, offering what I am doing becomes oh, more uh, <coughs> interesting, attractive, uh, pleasing, you know, easy, like that. Yes, we are not masters. <coughs> well, why? Why do we desire to enjoy if it is not our position? Why do we desire to be masters if it is, you know, it's nice to be a little uh, master something. Why do we have, uh, uh, okay, covered material, uh, where do we have senses covering our spiritual senses, material senses which are, which are you know, we can enjoy with that senses. Why do we have control over certain things, even in our material life? Some things or some people, the family or work or whatever, money or... Why do we have that? Because this is also our nature as part and parcel of God, who is the only master, but he can delegate to his servants, who are only servants, he can delegate some control, which will bring pleasure, provided, provided they don't forget that they are servant masters or servant enjoyers, like that. So Krishna is giving to, the, to his devotees, like the citizens of Malajambalish, Krishna is giving uh, control, uh, limited, of course, not like him, unlimited, <coughs> but he's giving, he may give limited control over people, over things. <coughs> he may give limited enjoyment uh, using the material energy to those devotees <coughs> who are uh, who remember that they are <coughs> receiving that from the Lord in order to please him, to serve him. They are not masters. They are not complete masters. So that's, you know, it's good. Uh, you know, it's interesting because uh, otherwise, if we present only that we are servant, 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 uh, which is what we have to learn first, maybe, <laughs> uh, before receiving from the Lord some possibility to exercise our uh, servant control or servant enjoyment you know uh, under him and for him intimately oh we have to get rid of this uh, false conception that i am an independent uh, co uh, master controller independent enjoyer you know, we have to get rid of that and then uh, sometimes it is good to be only a very little small insignificant <coughs> servant is no control over anything or anybody, no enjoyment, just, you know, uh, Hare Krishna. <laughs> yes. This is good. Because, you know, this... Uh, no enjoyment? Huh? No enjoyment? Just chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> Prabhu. <laughs> Shut up, surrender, and chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> And be happy. No right to be morose, Prabhupada said. <laughs> yeah, we all, you know, went to that, through that, and we are all going through that also, uh, regularly. Uh, sometimes we feel that's it, you know, I have understood. You know, I am servant of the Lord, and the devotees, and everything, and, and I have to use everything Krishna's service, great, you know, it's okay, oh, it's nice. And sometimes, boom, Krishna puts us back into you are, you know, insignificant servant, you know, I take away your enjoyment, or the enjoyment I was giving you, I take away the control, and, you know, chant Hare Krishna, and be happy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, it's important to remain always uh, humble, <coughs> so we are ready to receive the... Oh, uh, 
uh, I forgot to receive the uh, little chastisement because we are advanced devotees now. So we still need to be chastised sometimes, you know, like uh, you know, Indra, Brahma. They forgot, you know, they have been, they have received, you know, a lot of uh, uh, <coughs> uh, control from the Lord. They have received a lot of enjoyment. Brahma is a big controller, you know, he's controlling the universe. And he does it, you know, he has the intelligence, the creative understanding, power, and everybody. You know, surrenders them to me, to him in the material world, the demigods, you know, okay, Lord Brahma, okay. Yeah, he has a lot of control. Indra, well, he has a lot of opulence. His opulences, you know, you know, uh, what is this? Uh, dancing Apsaras, uh, singing uh, Gandharvas, and opulences, and big weapons to smash the uh, Asura, and, you know, a throne. And, uh, worshipped. So uh, uh, huh? So Majus. So Majus. Wow. <laughs> so Majus, you know. You must be quite advanced <laughs> to, to be interested by Krishna to become an Indra. Uh, sheesh. No, of course, we are devotees and it is not a joke. We prefer to a, a jar of So Majus. Like, we prefer a little drop of Charanamrita because we know that's a real you know, <coughs> uh, thing which is, you know, saving us from uh, repeated birth and death, unlimited sinful reactions, and mainly giving us, you know, attachment to Krishna. Anyway, you know, Indra, enjoyment by Krishna, probably deserves it. And Brahma, a lot of control by Krishna, probably deserves it. You know, even though they forget it sometimes, Krishna is not, uh, uh, you know, Krishna he know, Krishna knows, therefore he, he chooses his spirit souls for this post. Just like Prabhupada, he knew, <coughs> he knew that these devotees will, you know, forget, fall down. You know, these sannyas will uh, this, this uh, temple president will uh, go away with uh, money or this. And more or less he knew we were not we, we, all of us, we were not very, you know, mature, you know, I'm not, I'm just a servant, uh, president or, or, or uh, chief uh, sweeper of the temple, or, <laughs> uh, you know, I gave me, you know, some Lakshmi to manage or some responsibility of a wife or a, or a husband or this, but, you know, he knew that we were not, but still, you know, because uh, he saw our sincere, sincere means temporary sometimes, he saw our sincere devotion, faith and surrender. He knew that a picture to us, you know, whatever we would do, that would be an eternal benefit. So nice, eternal benefit. And uh, if by sentiment or attraction, Maya, because it's not far, we fall down, we stop, we will come back, you know, as soon as the opportunity will be there, we will come back to devotional service. So Krishna he does that, you know, give the post to Brahma and Indra and boom, they forget, they fall down, but he corrects them and they come back. You know, uh, Govada Lila or uh, Brahma Vimohan Lila, like that. Uh, so the whole thing is not to forget that we are servants. And uh, Krishna Finish Bhagavad Gita by his teaching, Salva Dharma Parityaja, Mamekam Shalalam Praja. If all your ideas of being controller of whatever, by following this process, that process, uh, this uh, yoga, this religion, all meant to remain master. <coughs> Thank you, God, to, re to, to put me in a position I'm still master. I just have to say thank you, give a little ritual or little money uh, or some little uh, sign like that but my my heart is still no i i am master by the mercy of god thank you Hare krishna not Hare krishna <laughs> <laughs> so yeah salvador memory no forget all that <coughs> and become my servant surrender surrender you know hundred percent whatever you have it doesn't belong to you whatever you pleasure it's a temporary gift means to serve me. And then I will 
protect you against all unhappiness, all dangers, all reactions to your sinful activities. I will protect you. And even if you fall down, Shipram, Bhaktidharma Tilas, very quickly I will put you back you know, uh, to your position of a happy servant, peaceful servant, surrender. And then Lord Chaitanya came back, Gopi Bhartu, Padakamalayor, Das, Das, and Das. He says the same thing. <coughs> uh, we are all servants. Servants of the servants. Uh, that's Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's message, the same as Krishna. We are all servants of the Lord. Uh, Ekala Ishvara Krishna, Alasabha Britya. There's only one Ekala uh, Ishvara, Ishvara, Master. Only one. It's pretty uh, transcendental autocrat. <laughs> and uh, Alasabha Britya. All, everybody else is servant of Krishna. And in the spiritual world, everybody is in ecstasy of being servant of Krishna. Like Advaita Acharya, I am the servant, I am the servant. Finally, Lord Chaitanya, you know, my Lord, has <coughs> you know, put me in a position of being a servant. He was, he was you know, very respectful to me before. I don't like that. You know, I, I want to be servant. Anuman, please, my Lord, if you really want to give me, a, if you insist to give me a benediction, please, a benediction <coughs> that I will never forget that I am your servant and that you are my master, Anuman. And uh, Gopi Bhartu Padakamaya, uh, Das, Das, and Das. Yeah, we want to be servants and never forget that. Because otherwise, all opulences, uh, control, enjoyment, uh, which are natural for the soul, you know, but as a servant to Krishna, uh, can disappear boom, like that. We are experiencing the French Yatra. A lot of opulence. And from day one to day two, bloop, <laughs> everything disappeared. You know? uh, yeah. Well, not the same for everyone. For some, <coughs> all their opulences disappeared, and also their spiritual opulence disappeared, their Krishna consciousness. For others, material opulences disappeared, but they you know, cling to the spiritual opulence, remaining servant of Krishna, even in, you know, material, austere conditions. And, you know, Krishna is uh, regularly nourishing his servants when it is difficult. He gives them maybe not material opulences or, or like that, but he regularly gives them or nourishes his, their spiritual opulence of Krishna consciousness. And when he wants, if he wants, when he wants, to whom he wants, he can give back material appearances which will be used really for his service. Control, you know, uh, devotee was a, a, a position <coughs> of uh, enjoyment, devotee was some appearances, like that. But the citizens of Marajan Barish, they did not desire that. They did not desire to have, you know, to, be, to take the position as their king, Maharaj Rambarish, you know. <coughs> no, no, we want to, you know, we want, we're going to cut his head, you know, he's a, he's a master more than us, you know, no, I want to burn, guillotine, no, they did not deserve that, they were grateful, because they are pure, hearing <coughs> and chanting makes you pure, Pavitram, Krishna is supreme pure, and if we regularly, sincerely associate with Krishna, uh, Uttama Shloka, glorious uh, qualities, activities, form, name, of the Supreme Lord of God, then we become pure. You know? So, or if we associate with the servants of God, then we become uh, <coughs> pure and we become servants more and more. We, we, we develop the, this mentality. That it is actually very peaceful and enjoying to be a servant. Oh, yeah, just like, uh, you know, the Chinese uh, saying that uh, uh, you cannot stand long time on the tip of your toe, toe, toes, toes, you know. And then we come down, down, whew, it's better. <laughs> you're a little less high, but you feel much better. It's your natural eye, you know. <laughs> 
So, yeah. I may be in the same position, having control over some, you know, some position, some enjoyment, but if the mentality change, oh, that's different. Uh, he, uh, false position, so, you know, I was, you know, I was on top, you know, but uh, it was suffering. You know, um, <laughs> it is suffering. You know that it is, you know, <coughs> you're not sure of yourself, you know that it is temporary, and you uh, are so-called independent master of my life, or around me, or enjoyment. No, no, it doesn't depend only on me. Uh, I am actually very much controlled by the stringent laws of this material nature through nature's uh, events, through other living entities, through my own mind or senses. <coughs> Hiranyakashipu had control over everything and everybody, but not on his senses. <laughs> so he lost everything. So, <coughs> but if you come down on your feet, you know, uh, then, uh, yes, uh, you feel comfortable as a servant master, servant enjoyer for Krishna's pleasure. Krishna is giving me some position, it doesn't belong to me, it is for his pleasure, and I have to learn gradually this dangerous, dangerous position. Yes, for us it is dangerous. Therefore, sannyasis who are renouncing this mentality of being master, Goswami, their master of their senses, they don't want, like God Chaitanya, did not want to associate at all with King Praktapalura. Money, women, opulences. I don't want to associate. Go away. Don't ask me anymore or I disappear, you will never see me again. It was very showing that if we want to really learn that we are not master enjoyers, we are servants of Krishna, we should not desire control or opulences, enjoyment. We should not desire like those citizens. And if uh, Krishna wants to give us that, please Krishna, protect me. That he doesn't come back, this idea that it is meant for me or it belongs to me. Please Krishna, let me remain a uh, humble servant of the servants, like the book of Tamal Krishna Mara, servant of the servant. No. Servant of the servant, yes. Maybe some opulence, some type of opulence is good for devotional service. It is. Because in the spiritual world, in I mean, the Goro Kredava yes. part, the opulences are yeah. like butter, yes. nice clothes, yeah. very simple things. Yeah. So maybe this type of opulence is good for yes. the devotion? Well, be it uh, butter and, simple, huh? and uh, you know, simple things like that, natural things, <coughs> or uh, vacant opulences, you know, uh, gold and uh, you know, rich places and that. Uh, it's the same, it's, uh, it's always good, uh, provided, provided we have this consciousness of being a servant, not a master. That's a, that's a danger. Well, I stress this uh, because it was the point of the verse that the denizens of Maramarish, they were gorgeously, they had, they had nice, good opulences, good life. It was natural, <coughs> they were citizens, a big king, <coughs> okay? Uh, or it can be uh, natural opulences of you know simple natural ones, but they do not, do not desire uh, independent uh, enjoyment or whatever. They were subordinate to the king, and the king was subordinate to God, to the to the sages, to the Vaishnava Brahmins, and therefore king citizens all the same. They were all you know fixed. In this consciousness, I am not. Uh, I don't desire anything. I just want to serve. Then Narayana Parasarve Nakutsachana Vidyati, either in uh, uh, Vaikuntha, uh, heavenly planets, or in hell, doesn't matter for me. With opulence, without opulence, it does. I don't desire just only to be a servant of Krishna, and that's the supreme uh, natural liberation, natural enjoyment of the soul, mukti ridvanyata rupam svarupena svarastiti, Srimad Bhagavatam says, real liberation and real opulence life, 
need to be situated in one's natural uh, position, Swarupena, Swarastiti, which is servant. That's Mukti. Otherwise, be it uh, so-called liberation from uh, material, uh, uh, materialistic consciousness, master and enjoyer like that, or <coughs> uh, 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 materialistic, yeah, is a freedom from that, or having opulences in devotional service, but we are weak, and we we uh, well, it's too much attractive, and I just you know, go over whatever Krishna allowed me to you to use these opulences, I, you know, then you know, for that dangerous. That was the point of the verse. You know, they, they did not desire it. They were not in danger, those citizens, although they live very happily, great enjoyment. We can believe in uh, Marashambari's kingdom. He was, you know, full of health, opulences, beautiful uh, ladies, strong, rich men, uh, you know, natural, you know, healthy food for sure. There was no plastic, no pesticide like that. Healthy food, healthy hair to breathe, everything was nice, yes. But they did not desire uh, that separated from the mentality of Krishna, please. Uh, you know, uh, I want to first of all hear and chant your glories and remain a uh, humble servant. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, the beginning of uh, Opulence is given by Krishna, maybe, may, you know, maybe it should be natural opulences like milk, proper food, good hair, good association between simple servants. That's, uh, that's what Prabhupada uh, stressed, simple life and high thinking. Hearing and chanting for remembering Krishna and the master and simple life. And he said, if you simply serve Krishna here in New Mayapur or everywhere, if you simply serve Krishna with love, which means with no, no I don't want to, come, I want to no, exploit Krishna's opulence. But if you simply serve <coughs> Krishna while thinking of him with love, you will obtain automatically whatever you need. Don't worry. You will receive opulences. You will receive positions to satisfy your spiritual uh, desire to control uh, things or people for their spiritual benefit, for Krishna's pleasure. Yes, you will receive that, don't worry. And uh, yes, you are right. Natural opulences, uh, that's probably the first uh, opulency that we should uh, aspire for in order to better serve Krishna. And this is uh, actually a very, very powerful preaching. Because you can see today, people having been purified some or other by whatever Sankirtan Jagya has been accomplished since 50 years, when Prabhupada started, the effect is that something totally new and unexpected Happen, happen. Uh, more and more people, young people even, mainly, are uh, attracted to uh, the natural, uh, the, the, the laws of nature, the right laws of nature, you know, which means being non-violent, depending on natural life, uh, production, and uh, being uh, together as, uh, you know, brotherhood like that, although they don't connect it completely now with the brother or with the father, but they like the mother. They like the mother. They like mother nature. So this is a very, very powerful uh, preaching uh, coming from the Sankirtan Jagya, of chanting Japa, doing Harinam outside, distributing books, and now the next phase of this same Jagya Sankirtan Jagya means also to uh, show uh, the opulence that uh, you can get, all of you. Uh, the example of uh, you know, natural life, beautiful uh, 
natural uh, new Mayapur uh, <coughs> by devotees of Krishna, by those who chant the, the joyful the holy name. No much philosophy, but at least, yes, yes, we are like you, you are like us, we like mother, we like mother nature, therefore we are all brothers. But we, we also like the father, and we like to chant his name, it's not difficult, and then, oh, next phase they will ask about you know, Bhagavad Gita and things like that. But it's very powerful preaching, this uh, uh, attraction to natural opulences uh, from the devotees. Those who are towards natural opulences without God, it will not uh, last. It will be uh, uh, de uh, destroyed by the natural human depravation, depravation men. That was a result of a study done in the 19th century. <coughs> Communities which were driven by some spiritual goal, religious goal, they would uh, 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 remain stable and prosper much better uh, than those who were driven only by social uh, goal. You know, uh, let's live uh, with uh, natural uh, prosperity and <coughs> all together democracy, demo like that. Then it was those communities were sooner or late quickly destroyed by human depravation, you know, sense enjoyment, you know, money, you know, sex, and things like that. Like the hippies, you know. Those hippies who clinch to Prabhupada's mercy and chanting Hare Krishna and Bhagavad Gita, whew, they made it. But all those who remain into sex, drugs, and so-called uh, uh, make love, uh, ma make uh, war, not, uh, anyway, make like this, you know, they, they blew it. You know. <laughs> Very quickly, you know, it was Summer of Love, 1966, 1967, it was horrible, they said. You know, it was you know, illusory opulence, oh, we all love each other, you know, let's have all sex, you know, and all drugs and like that. Next year, it was just, you know, gross, horrible exploitation of the bodies and uh, destroying of the body like that. One year it lasted. But the Hare Krishna movement, for those people, hippies are yet, it lasted now, you know, 50 years. And it will keep, yeah. Ravindra has said. Yes. So, Ravindra, so those people who were hippies or in the mode of ignorance, either they graduated to the mode of passion. Yes. Or they died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the two options. Yeah. yeah. Passion <laughs> is a great uh, step forward when we are in ignorance, drug and, and, uh, and crazy sex. It's a great step forward, because in order to get out of ignorance, you need some mercy, you need some strength. And the strength is Balaram, it's Krishna, it's God. No, you need some spiritual means like that. Otherwise, maybe just a very temporary, passionate thing, and then burn again, burn into depression, violence, like that. Like the world today, you know? The so-called uh, passion, you know, economic development and big meetings and big money, big uh, inventions, you know, very proud of that, yes, you know, democracy like that. But, you know, again, <coughs> you know, at any time, uh, it, uh, people have anxiety, uh, the virus, or anxiety about the nuclear weapons, and actually it may come, you know, any time, and destroy their so-called... Uh, uh, Nice passion. No, it's it's sinful passion. But for devotees or hippies, if they develop uh, 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 devotional passion, <coughs> that's a great progress. Yeah, and they must be serious, which means keep hearing and chanting, hearing and chanting about the Uttama Shloka, the glorious, beautiful, natural opulences of God or Krishna. I and think he he was just talking. Talking about ordinary people, I, I don't think he was talking about the devotees, about who the, those who have survived the fifty days. Yeah, but if you, no. not being a devotee, if you uh, get out of ignorance and go to passion, so the point is that you know, if your passion is linked with some devotees or some yeah. devotional service, you may 
gradually go to Sadlagun. But passion by nature is, you know, very unstable. And, uh, you know, so today, all these uh, so-called uh, ecological people, <coughs> meditating Buddhism, uh, uh, ecological political parties, Buddhism, med meditation, uh, veganism, everything like that. This is a great step, but it is in passion. It's, you know, like that. But those of them, you know, Buddhist, vegan, uh, ecological, uh, uh, politics or fanatics, if they uh, uh, connect with uh, devotees, with devotion service, with Santyatan Jagya, or oh, they make reach some genuine sattva moon life. And they will be happy, they will be peaceful. Uh, they will, you know, may not uh, become devotees, as we know, and uh, we don't expect, it, we should not expect that, otherwise, you know, we push them to their throat, some things they cannot digest. <laughs> but uh, they may become peaceful, uh, less sinful, uh, purified from a lot of sinful activities because of their connection with the Hare Krishna movement. And because of that, their life will be successful. They will go through all their life without big traumatic events by Krishna's mercy, by the devotee's mercy. And, uh, you know, <coughs> sooner or later they will make progress more and more toward devotional service. So this phase now of uh, <coughs> uh, 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 showing the example that a devotee hearing and chanting person, chanting Hare Krishna, uh, just chanting Hare Krishna and hearing the name, those per persons, devotees, oh, they are living in a very natural opulences. And they are also joyful, chanting Hare Krishna mantra and friendly, brotherly, you know, nice relationship. Oh, very nice. Just like that, what New Mayapur is supposed to offer, and is actually more and more offering, you can see that. Oh, Krishna will send more and more of those friends of Krishna, which are, you know, f friends of the devotees. And we feel a friend of them. Okay. Any question or comments? But we should not desire independent uh, position, opulences, enjoyment. We have to be careful. Be serious. Regular hearing and chanting. The pure devotional service. Jai. Chir Prabhupada ki jai. Seems to be <coughs> something that uh, how should I say indication, but it's only here in, in, in Gokul that the gopis have blinking eyes because uh, they're complaining <coughs> that it's, it's Lord Brahma's fault, but he, he as far as I know, he's not uh, involved in the. Uh, Oh, affairs of he, just did what he, he was supposed to do that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so? So, so, uh, I mean, it's just a small thing. Oh, I, I did not hear the thing in English. That, uh, it's only here in, in Gokul that the gopis are blinking us. Okay. But then Goloka, they did. I mean, even the demagogues don't have blinking us. Yes, yes. There is no... No, it seems no, like, so, no so mistake, it is you know. also, it, it would be strange if they had blinking eyes in Goloka. No, there's no mistake in Goloka. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, the, but that gives uh, rise to a special leela here in, in Goku, that they have blinking eyes. Yeah, yeah. Because then they <coughs> yeah. feel the separation, yeah, separation for a split second. <laughs> separation, you get it done. Even though they are complaining to Lord Brahma, but actually they are experiencing yeah. So that's nothing not is nothing is even the so-called suffering in, in spiritual life is a, another simply another type of so, yeah, so the suffering the separation from Krishna when they blink their eyes is, is actually separation. <coughs> so but that's if my if my if my feeling is right then they that is only in, in Goku. 
but they have this ecstasy. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we heard that only here yeah, there is separation. Yeah. We don't know. Yeah, in the spiritual it's world they also feel separation, but, uh, but there's no. <laughs> yeah. That's the point. Separation is a yeah, it's our soul point. So blinking eyes is actually much much better than in a sense, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are certain things. Uh, but I don't want to contradict the gopis, you know, be careful, you know. <laughs> they said, you know. We are not. They call on.